What's happening, sports fans? Christian Pedersen here in the SDPI studios, practicing safe social distancing, conducting FaceTime interviews. Our next top recruit that we've got is Ryan Bill. He plays football for San Pasqual. I guess played football for San Pasqual. That 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 feels kind of weird to say now, but football is done for him, so he's moving on. He's going to be playing at USD next year. How are you doing, my man? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Just hanging in there with all this going on right now, but you know, do you miss good. school? You know, I miss the social aspect of it and all the sports, you know, going on and all that stuff, but certainly not. Okay, so but if I had if I had to put you in one category or the other, like a a yes or no answer, can I have you on the record saying that you actually miss school? Yes, you can have me like that. Yeah. It's a the the that's becoming a universal thing, and I think that people need to like mark the tape every now. I'm 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 convincing high school kids to admit that they like school and they miss it. (laughs) (laughs) So I mean, this is crazy times. Um, self isolation for you and the family. I'm assuming. So what have you been doing to pass the time? Oh man, it's um my favorite thing to do right now is actually uh, go golf. Uh, we we live in a community as it's a golf course community, so I just take the golf cart we own down there and I just play golf by myself. Uh, other than that, it's just been working out and some video games, stuff like that. You know, is the handicap getting better? I mean, are you really like with nobody out there? You're able to really focus on it, or are you yeah. <laughs> uh, are you self scoring a little bit more generously than ever before because no one's out there watching? You know, I'm a little bit more generous with myself. You know, maybe if it's uh, in a spot I don't like, maybe just tap it over. A little well, bit, and, and he, here's my thing is is as soon as you get on the green, you know, don't worry about physically having to touch the, the flag or the cup or anything mm-hmm. like that and just go, yeah, I would have made that putt. I'll give yeah, myself exactly. a one. So every yeah. time you touch the green, you just <laughs> you, you go, yeah, just, just add one more. Let's call it a hole. Um, Moving on. Move on. Yeah, because nobody can prove that you wouldn't have made the putt. Uh, exactly. that, that, that's where I fall into. So, wait, wait, uh, do you play golf at P- San Pasqual? Forgive my ignorance, or is it just football for you? No, it's, um, I do football and then I do the throws for track and field. Okay. Cause I was going to say, cause your golf team posted a pretty insane video a couple days ago or about several clips yeah. of a video of them making some, some amazing trick shots. And I, I was like, this is the moment that golf has always waited for. They can now take over the sports <laughs> yeah. landscape. They are the only thing left <laughs> other than maybe tennis where you can be far enough away from somebody that you're like, all right, this is good. We can keep going. Um, so uh, video games. Got to ask, what have you been playing? Oh, man. Um, it's just been a combination of whatever I can find on there. It's just Madden. Um, have you started to you dig know, back into the throwbacks? You know, um, not yet. I'm not there yet, but uh, right now it's just been, you know, Madden, Call of Duty, uh, just the simple things, you know. Hey, man, sometimes the easiest, simplest is the best. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I asked the, the throwback game thing just because for me and my generation, uh, people are starting to revisit the N64 and play Mario mm-hmm. Kart again and stuff like that. But I feel like to your generation, that's not even a throwback. That's a, we never had that and we don't know what that is. And we don't want, <laughs> we don't have any like attachment or interest to that. Mm-hmm. So are you guys busting out? Like, is, is somebody going to get out an original Xbox and be like, Oh, like I'll play some, I, I, I'm just asking. Cause I feel like we all fall now in this weird, different world of what video games, like the lowest possible standards are for what we're willing to play these days. Mm-hmm. Um, have you tried uh, VR yet? I have not. No, it's a pretty insane experience. Um, I, yeah. I, I've I've tried it a couple of times for the PlayStation. Quite entertaining. Um, the day that that becomes a Madden thing is terrifying. Oh, uh, yeah, that's when, when you when you actually get to be the uh, the the quarterback. Well, okay. So let me ask you this then: you you are you are an offensive lineman. Um, mm. If that was a reality and you could play Madden virtual reality. Do you enjoy being an offensive lineman enough that you'd want to go and be the offensive lineman in that play, or would you go be Patrick Mahomes and and, and be that guy? You know, I think I'd mix it up a little bit because I think it'd be pretty fun to be Patrick Mahomes and you know. It's like so what I'm what I'm what I'm getting at what, what I'm getting at here is that no matter how much every lineman loves their job everybody still has just a little bit of that inner in themselves where they're like, I want to be that guy scoring the ball. And I, I love when exactly. I can get linemen to it, exactly. admit that because the visual is funny of, of, of some of the you know offensive guards and tackles being like, I'm the guy dropping back, throwing the passes, but you know yeah. that every one of them 
has dreamed of that moment where they're just able to throw that one good spiral. And, and I love mm. hearing guys talk about that because you guys break your necks day in and day out to keep that guy safe and never get a chance to actually, you know, be on either end of that, you know, one big pass or run or something like that. So for exactly. you, for football, you're going on to play at USD. Why USD? Um, you know, just in the recruiting process, they were just, you know, they seemed very interested in me. Um, they were close by, you know, always keeping in touch. And um, just the coaches I'm talk- they were talking to were great guys, great coaches. And just whenever, when I got down there, um, you know, I watched a couple of these, their spring games and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a great football team, great program. Okay, so so I, I was excited to play. So I want, I want you to listen to this question and, and try to hear it as an objective. You're a senior and you can educate other guys' question and not necessarily as any sort of an insult, but you're not going on to play at the Division One FCS school, or FBS, mm-hmm. sorry. You're not playing at the D1 FBS school here in town. You're not going to Alabama or like a Power 5 school. You're going to something that's a little more, you know, a little more suited to being one step down, but you're going to get playing time and it's going to be an Mm. academic thing. And was there ever a point in the recruiting process where you had to say to yourself, man, this is just a better opportunity all around for me instead of trying to go be that 10th guy trying to get a a D1 offer at San Diego State? Like, Talk a little bit about that, if you can, to some of the younger kids out there listening. Um, Yeah, it was just looking through my options and recruiting and stuff. I was, it was just trying to decide if I wanted to be, you know, a backup at some big school or if I could come in and, you know, work, you know, for my first red shirt year or whatever, and then end up becoming a starter at uh, FCS instead of uh, FBS. Well, I, just, I think I, I, I'm sorry to kind of cut you off. I think I yeah. asked because I see a lot of kids on social media, you know, hunting for that big offer, that big mm-hmm. offer. But I think that for a lot of you guys out there, take, kind of a little bit of this advice and you don't have to always be hunting for that big d1 offer where it's like hey i'm gonna you know if i don't get that i'm gonna say no to everything else or wait for this sometimes you just got to pull the trigger on what feels right holistically all around for you and and yeah when did you actually get the usd offers there a good story surrounding that oh um you know i think i was sitting at my desk it was either playing video games or it was doing some homework. And um, Coach Sutton down at USD gives me a call. And um, he just calls me and says uh, they're going to take a, a chance on me and they're going to offer me. And, I mean, it, it wasn't like a good story or anything. It so you just, hang up the phone and you're like, Mom, no more homework tonight. Yeah. I got D1. I, you know, we're uh, like, this is happening. I'm, uh, t- yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go one, one night of no, no geography or whatever this is because we need to celebrate. Um, yeah. So that I'm sure that was a pretty good feeling. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit. Uh, we had Coach Clark on the show mm-hmm. earlier last week talking about what he's just up to, Ben, ben Boredom, and he was telling some stories about coaches. And I was hoping maybe you could have a funny story you could tell about Coach Clark. Um, just, I want to preface this with, for those of you that I'm sure were not listening the last first time we had Coach Clark on uh, during the football season, he's very passionate about his kids, and I, I think there's a free-flowing personality there because he came on this show and we asked him about a, a hypothetical of uh, what movie characters or TV characters you would add to your football team, and he didn't choose anybody because, and I quote, he said, if I picked a running back, Mark Santar would slash my Achilles, and then he laughed about it, so... I think that Coach Clark is kind of a, he's a little bit of a personality. Is there a story there you can tell us about him? Oh, you know, there's, as as for his personality, it's just whenever he walks in the huddle, you know, he'll be making fun of guys or playing jokes with guys. But, you know, my, I think my absolute favorite story about Coach Clark, and he's probably going to hate me if <laughs> for telling this, but I'm going to do it anyways, Um is we we were having a we were practice and it was a receiver quarterback practice or whatever, <laughs> and um, our quarterback um, throws a pass to one of our receivers, and he's Coach Clark is standing behind this receiver just out in the middle of the field watching, and the receiver receiver's running a route in front of Coach Clark, and the the ball just goes right through the receiver's hands, and it just ends up just coming and it drills him in the side of the face. And he just, I mean, it was, obviously it was like, you know, oh, oh crap, you know, 
he got maybe a concussion there, but um, he was just pissed at us for the whole rest of the practice. He's just, he's just, he wouldn't even call plays or anything like that. He told, he told uh, the running back coach, like, you're on it for the rest of the day. And he just walked away and just was furious. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, yeah. that, that's why you don't pass the ball. That's why you just run the ball. Yeah, um, that's what we do at SP. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. And then the pass attempts went from three a game to two. Um, yeah. <laughs> and really went downhill like that. Speaking of that style of play, kind of introduce yourselves to the USD fans in terms of what you hope to bring, you know, in terms of who you are as a football player to the Torero squad. Um, I just hope to bring, you know, myself and, you know, be intense, be, you know, hardworking, you know, I'm, I'm here to get the job and I'm here to win. Um, you know, I just want to be the best player I can be. He's here for the dubs. Yeah. That's what he's saying. He's here for the dubs. He's staying local. So uh, if we don't get a chance to see you for track and field season, we will get to see you wearing a, a little bit lighter shade of blue. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you didn't pick anything conflicting there. That, I'm sure that's nice. You'll be able to keep yeah. the family will be able to, you know, keep it in that blue lane already. Workaround, um, yeah. yeah. A good workaround like that. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay safe, stay well. We hope to see you, like I said, for a little bit of track season. If not folks go check him out next year as part of what might be the best football team in San Diego at the USD Toreros level. Stay safe, my man. We'll talk to you soon.